morning are on the back of the bulletin. I'll call your attention to those. Uh, you'll see the needs for the Easter egg hunt listed there. And you'll see our Holy Week schedule there. And I just call your attention to um, especially Good Friday when our friends from Eastlake and Avondale, United Methodist Churches, will join us here for a Good Friday service. And a couple of announcements that aren't on your bulletin. Um, the surveys to help us plan our outreach ministries for the year are on a bright yellow piece of paper. If you haven't filled one out, they're available out here in the vestibule. And uh, please fill that out and turn it in so we can make our plans. Um, and the last announcement is our church council meets immediately after worship in the choir room.
opening prayer, which is printed in our bulletin, we'll say this in unison. New every morning is your love, great God of light, and all day long you are working for good in the world. Serve up in us desire to serve you, to live peacefully with our neighbors and all of your creation, and to know each day to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning.
Our second scripture today is taken from Ezekiel chapter 37. As I read this, I invite you to um, really let this image build in your mind. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, Oh, Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves. O my people, I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves. O my people, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. May the Spirit of Christ dwell where the Word of God is spoken. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. So I've been thinking about refugees lately. I mean, by definition, refugees are anyone who have fled their home because of persecution, a war, or violence, any uninhabitable living conditions. And these days we hear a lot about refugees in many places in the world. In 2017, there were 25 million refugees around the world. That's like the whole population of Australia having to find some other place to live. And most recently, I've read about the Syrian refugees who once again were displaced because of the earthquakes in Turkey and Syria. There were Syrians who, who left their home beginning in the spring of 2011 when protests against their leader, Assad, and the whole Syrian government were met with violent suppression, and then a war fought by many factions has just continued since then, over 10 years. So over 3 million Syrians were granted refuge in Turkey, and then another 7 million more still live in Syria, just they're uprooted from their homes, and, and some of them are having to move from place to place to place. Then there are other Syrian refugees who have, who have found a place to live in other parts of the world, including our country. 
So imagine these refugees, these Syrian refugees, having to, to find some kind of temporary shelter to make their home. And then the literal earth coming out from under their feet. I mean, how do they go on? How do they keep recreating home? How, I want to know, do they keep hope alive? So I imagine that the Hebrews who were removed from their homes when the Assyrians and Babylonians conquered their land knew a similar kind of despair, challenges to having hope. We hear it in some of the Psalms and the words of the prophets. By the waters of Babylon we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. So Ezekiel, who may be the funkiest prophet, <laughs> Ezekiel was, was prophesying to those who landed in Babylon. And to prophesy is to tell the truth, to proclaim the truth. Now, sometimes it is truth about what will happen in the future. That's what we usually think of when we hear the word prophecies. But the prophets of Israel proclaimed truth, God's truth, to Israel. Sometimes they proclaimed it to Israel's captors or those that threatened um, them. So the hand of the Lord brings Ezekiel to this place that is one of his most dramatic settings. Now, was it a literal, physical valley of dry bones? Was it a vision that felt so real to Ezekiel's mind? Was it language that was given to him by the Spirit of God? We don't know. But it is powerful. And, and this scene has a powerful message. Dry bones in a valley. I think of, I think of this valley like a pit that might be hard to get out of, and bodies down there that were left such a long time ago that they only have bones remaining. Dry bones in a valley seems like a perfect illustration for lost hope. Now, this lost hope seems like it would be easy to dismiss God's question, can these bones live? Can these bones live? Well, Ezekiel is clever in his response, which is not a yes or no answer to a yes or no question. Lord, you know, you know if these bones can live, or maybe it's only you know, Lord, only with you, Lord, can these bones live. But God gives Ezekiel some of the power. And it's not superhuman power or superhero power. God calls Ezekiel mortal throughout this whole scene, this mortal, human. Prophets have gifts like we all do, and are given power by God, like we all do. They are regular people. God instructs Ezekiel to prophesy to these bones, to prophesy to the breath, the breath that we all need for life, the ruach, which is that Hebrew word meaning breath and spirit that God breathes into creation in the beginning. Tell breath, tell Ruach to fill the multitude so they may stand. Then, with this picture, this vision, God tells Ezekiel, these bones are the house of Israel, 
who are crying out to me because they feel they have dried up. They've lost hope. Maybe they're saying, God, will we ever see our home again? These displaced in Babylon weighed down with despair. This is who Ezekiel is to prophesy to. This is who needs to receive the truth that God will revive and resuscitate and resurrect them. They will live again. They will be brought back to their home in Israel. God's truth is that the house of Israel will be filled with breath and spirit once again. What do you imagine the hope in that message did for those people who felt so dried up, so weighed down with despair? I imagine that it lifted them. Lifted them physically, definitely. Lifted them emotionally. I imagine that that prophecy was sweet enough to take some of the bitterness out of their mouths. I imagine that that renewed hope got them moving Again, it's what they needed to continue to tell their children about their homeland and the God who will bring them home. It's what they need to encourage the communities to hold on. There is hope to hold on to now. Now, I don't know if this is what keeps refugees, the Syrian refugees of today going or not. A message of hope from God, however their faith imagines God. Hope that they will be filled with breath and spirit and life to go on. I know that my faith gives me that in dry times. And mine are not to be compared with that of refugees, but we all have moments of despair, don't we? We all have places where we feel lost and feel so far away from home. However we define home. Sometimes home is a feeling. Sometimes it's a a place. Sometimes it's a community. And I know that many times, God's truth comes to me from modern-day prophets, from people who are mortal, regular people who know the truth of God's power to revive and resurrect. These prophets tell me stories of God that lead to new life. They walk with me through the desert valleys that seem hopeless, and sometimes they are able to show me the way out. They stay by my side and whisper reminders that God has filled us with ruach, the spirit, reminders when I forget. This prophesying to dry bones, to hear the word of the Lord of life, The word of the Lord is life. And if we know God's truth of new life, if we have experienced that, then we are to prophesy to those who have lost hope. That may be with words. That may be with images. It may be with emergency shelter or a place to rest. It may be the stories of God as our home, with a community of siblings who care. If we have known 
new life in God. We are the ones to share this hope with others. So we have two weeks until Easter. You know, Easter like the epitome of hope. It is where our hope is birthed. And as we make our way these next two weeks, I want you to examine the hope you know, the, the hope that you need, and the hope that you can share with somebody else. Amen. Would you stand at your angle and turn to him for twenty? Read on me, breath of God.
We pray for those feeling empty and lost today. And we ask to that you would fill them with your breath and lead them home. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for refugees all over the world, those who are missing home and searching for home and clinging to hope. May your hope of a new life sustain them. And we lament the refugees who have died trying to find safety, including those who have drowned off the coast of Tunisia this very weekend. May your mercy be with their loved ones. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you for the prophets who listen to you and step out to share your truth even when it seems unlikely. The prophets who bring good news of hope and new life to us. May we have ears to listen and courage to step out when we need to be your prophets. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, we lift up Tag McCord and Bob Bliss and others who need your healing and hope. Lord, in your mercy. We now join our voices together to pray to you the prayer Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours forever. Amen. As the ushers come forward to receive our tithes and offerings, will you bow your head to pray with me? Almighty and restoring God, we are living through difficult days. Sometimes we wonder if we'll make it through one more day and whether our church will survive another generation and we feel like dry bones. As we offer our tithes and offerings today, help us hear the word of hope the prophet shares, not just with our ears, but with our hearts. May it call us back to life and service out of the graves of despair in which we have buried ourselves. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen.
communion through this invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we can confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us from joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned our way and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
sharing in the body of Christ. And the cup over which we give thanks is a means of sharing in the blood of Christ. You are invited to come.
And one of our members that have been remiss for us to lift up and pray for is Kathy Morgan. Kathy is in the middle of a three-week training in Oklahoma for National Guard that she's a part of. She has a go and do this, and I had forgotten to, some of y'all probably know that, but I've forgotten to lift her up during this time, so if we could remember her. And then um, I'll just remind church council we're going to, go have our meeting immediately following this. We, we moved our meeting so that we could all enjoy Jan's reception and, and lunch last week. May we go from this place knowing that the God that revives and resuscitates and resurrects us walks with us as our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Thank you.